the meeting to order. And first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. The only addition uh, that Teresa brought up is we'd like to put in there this evening to to reappoint us, reappoint two of the um, planning commission uh, committees. So if we could put that maybe at the end is fine, Lisa. Two planning commission members. Yeah. And then, if Mr. Benson's okay, you want to move up to the beginning? You good with that? Or do you want to hang out for a while? Or uh, let's see. We had you kind of hang out towards the end. I got. I don't think any of these are really going to take a lot of time, but no, I'm good. We okay. Yeah. At any time, we can always move them up, I guess. <laughs> we notice he's getting antsy. Can't sit still in his <laughs> seat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Teresa, do you have anything no, else you want to add? Okay. I move we accept the agenda as <clears throat> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And public comment inquiry. This is the opportunity to discuss anything that's not on the agenda for this evening. Uh, I just I was with David at the legislative breakfast this morning and left before I got a chance to say anything to the legislators down there, but um, do you know, we, we talked at one point about this, about any help for the downtown businesses given the current, given the, uh, the activity that will be taking place this summer. Yep. Know you, we applied for the grant and we actually sent it and put in our letter of intent and we got some notes back today on the letter of intent, a couple more things that she wants, Susan Poole and the USDARD. So yep, we worked out a schedule and I think we're applying for about $7,500 because that does, that buys us advertising in the newspaper, a coupon spread, regular radio spots. Um, so we did, we have a budget and yep, so we're in the process and it's going well. Okay. Um, I guess um, it would help to communicate that maybe a little bit. Those guys, those folks downtown. Well, I've spoken to all of them and told yeah. them that we were applying and that the letter of intent was due okay. in February, but I can, you know, talk to them again. I was kind of waiting to see if we were going to make it into the mix or not, but, um, it, and actually they should know because Dietrich reached out to several of them asking for letters of support. So I know she had had conversations with some of them as well. So we have, we have, um, a good job. Okay. When so, would we hear back on that grant? Well, I, I'm not, I know we had to have the letter of intent in by February and we had submitted it and then it came back with some notes, but my guess is it's going to depend on federal funding. So I'm not sure if we're going to hear by March or April. I don't remember. I'll find out. I, I can't remember what the, I just remembered that was the deadline for the um, letter of intent. Okay. But I can certainly, once Dietrich gets it worked out, um, I can let the other ones know because like Dave Sanborn might not have known but she had talked to a couple other people. So she hadn't got, she was trying to get them from a mix of businesses. So, so the letter of intent was approved or was? Um, it was just sent, <laughs> they accepted it. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> just sent it back with some notes. Oh, great. So just wanted some additional information. Okay. Was, was there anybody in particular that you felt was unaware of it? Uh, well, they. Yeah, because we didn't ask. Yeah. She didn't, because I think she was maybe dealing with cockadoodle already, so she only needed one restaurant. Yeah. So that's how she, I think she was trying to divvy it up, because I think she, Lindley, and I know she had um, Washburn Insurance Agent, so she was trying to get a mix of businesses together. <laughs> so that was her. That way, all the letters of intent were from one type. The problem with the grant is what it's asking you is how many jobs this money will help gain. Um, and really, and we can't, we're saying none, but it would help us maybe save some and so none of the businesses went out. And that's what Dietrich was trying to focus on because that was one of the ladies follow up questions, Susan Poulins. And, and we've asked businesses that question. Susan Poulins? Yep, at USDARD. Hmm. Yeah. She's very local. If it's Poland or not, not is it Poland? I think it's P-O-U-L-I-N, yeah. Poulin, I think so. I'm not sure where she's from, but. Okay. But anyways, once we find out a little more information, I can have Dietrich send everybody a note. Yeah. yeah. No. Or talk, I 
happens often. Sounds great. You're, you're on it. Well, so, 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 the mo- so the money, the grant money, is not so much for direct giving to the businesses as no. it is for just advertising, letting other people in the area know that we're open still open for business. Yep, in, absolutely. Yeah. During no, the construction no, period. I, yeah. can talk, I can't find the grants in the capital. Right, what it's right. going to do is it did buy us because she met with CBR and met us, bought us radio spots, it bought us ads, significant ads in the paper, along with we thought about doing a coupon you know, insert in all the papers that would help bring people into Bethel too, mm-hmm. so that each one of the businesses could offer something as part of a, you know, something for a coupon. Mm-hmm. So we had kind of looked at it from all you know, angles. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Dave? At that meeting, uh, Neil Fox. Uh, was talking about uh, um, economic development, and it, uh, I hadn't heard anything, so I thought I'd bring it up tonight. That we, if we could, contact our regional economic development group yep. and see if we could do something with that 50,000 square foot empty building down there by the sewer plant. Well, I think they're working. I think there's a couple of plans there right now. Yeah, are you talking about the um, no, has has. He actually yeah. has a plan. I spoke, I already spoke to- well, um, No one there knew it today. Oh, what is, I'm trying to find him. Bob Haynes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. His name is Bob. I spoke with Bob Haynes already about this. And um, the owner of the building is going to be developing his own um, company and making something there. So he does have a plan for the building. Good. If we need to talk to me, yep. I'll be talking to him in the next couple of days. Yeah. I can email him. Wouldn't hurt. Um, yeah, that would be really good, actually. That was a big deal for him, this economic development stuff. Yeah. Well, it is, and that's part of the, actually, I was going to reach out to, actually, Lang, Earthy, because I want to start the, that whole, um, you know, the Better Business, or, or Bethel Business Association, and I want to talk to Lang to see if he had any historical information about when it was running before, so we can get that going and reach out to all businesses, not just downtown, like yourself, any home business and everything. We could probably help you out with that a little bit. Neil? With the DBA. Neil Kush? Yes, that's what I would, or you can. Oh, excellent, oh, perfect. I'm looking yeah. to kind of see if there was any, anything written up, like was there, um, you know, uh, parameters on what they did? Was there anything, you know, kind of formal in writing? Was there we get bylaws? bylaws? Yeah, uh, well, I'll tell you, I can't find anything at the town office. <laughs> no, I'm sure you can't, because it was a separate. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the town. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, but we get the call. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, well, I'll email you too about that then. All right, perfect, thank you. I'll let Neil know about the um, past dance. Neil was the most recent president, so you probably <laughs> Okay, I will do both. I'll send an email. We'll probably like to spend some time with you. <laughs> yeah. Seems how he's retired. Yeah, oh, I've, yeah, I mean, I've seen him frequently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'll make a note to email you both. Okay. <clears throat> so that would be great. I'd like to get that started again. All right. Anything else? Alex, if you're here about the trash ordinance, you should talk about it now because it's not on the agenda later. No. Okay, I just, sure. just wanted to make sure I didn't want you to miss an opportunity. So I didn't want to go by and say, like, hey, I missed it. <laughs> All right. All right, anything else? Public comment, inquiry? All right, we'll move along. Um, first topic um, is just to talk about the timeline for the updated town plan. So the roadmap to what, end of May, is that one gotta be in by? It has to be adopted by the end of May. I do think on right. here, once I read it again, I think where she wrote May 31st, draft plan ready for planning commission hearing, I think she meant the letter board. Because the planning commission will hold their hearings, mm-hmm. and then it comes to the select board after they've made any changes from theirs. And then the select board will hold their own hearings. Mm-hmm. And you can make any changes, and if you make any changes, then you have to have another um, mm-hmm. public hearing. But I did attend last time, and they're, um, you know, they went right along. They had the conservation commission happened to be there, and they were very helpful, helped 
and get through the wreck and through a couple other chapters. They were great. And um, as I've said, uh, since they have limited members, I spoke to Cecil, Kelly, Pam, and, um, and was asking people about names for anyone who might, who they thought might be, you know, a good person to take to work on the planning commission. So we have a list of names, and I'm going to be mailing them individual personal invitations to see if they can, will come to the next planning commission meeting, just to sit through it and see this is what it's all about, and hopefully um, we get some takers because you can have up to nine members. Okay. And they're working with Peter and Cecil and. One that's resigned, but I think is going to come stay through the process, and the other one who I'm not sure he's going to stay through the process or not. So Peter's been there forever. Mm -hmm. He has a long time. And he said that. <laughs> I think I have a feeling this may be his last town plan, and they would like more people to join. So that was our plan. Since we've tried the newspaper and other avenues, we thought maybe personal invitation. So if you think of anyone, please, you know, let me know and we'll add their names to the list. So in the in the letter they just talk about that the plan is roughly eighty percent complete. Um, and that the remaining contract balance is eighteen hundred dollars, which equates to about twenty four hours of labor. Yeah, they have and a they, planning grant. And they set out the remaining work. So does it, Will everything be done on budget, or I guess that kind of raised the flag for me if that means that they were kind of warning us like it's going to cost more, or, no, she or said we're on track? That, or? That's one of the reasons she didn't come tonight, because okay. we talked about it, and I just said, look, if you do a write-up, that's fine. I said, you know, we know what the, if, the, if there's a member in the select board that hasn't been through the process, <laughs> it'll be nice for them to know that they get, you know, bites at the apple, a couple, right. first one the planning commission, and then later. Okay. But I, she said she had limited hours, so I said, no, nope, that's fine. You don't need to come. Okay. And worst case scenario, if they're finished, she sends it to us in a draft. Once you start holding your hearings, any changes you make, I could make in the plan. So, you know, we'll pick it up where we have to. But Okay. Does anybody on the board have any questions? members, you could look at the sign-in sheets for the um, Dollar General hearings. There were some good candidates on that list. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, I'll Kelly look at this one. And I even had Mary Floyd, because she had a great contingent show up for the Conservation Commission. Yeah. And the PC is like, how do you feed him milk? <laughs> <laughs> um, what potential PC members? Okay, that's great, because we, um, I had Kelly and Pam going like street by street, like, you know, on her dime, like, picking bugs with lift wear. Okay. Any further discussion? All good. All right, moving along. Class four highway policy. We had the last meeting. We had talked uh, in depth on on the policy at hand and any corrections that we wanted to see. And this is now the final draft. Yeah, there was no changes. So. It was just um, we had to take the word draft off of it. So. Mm -hmm. Does anybody on the board have any further? Questions in regards to policy? No. All right. So I would entertain a motion to accept the town of Bethel Class 4 highway policy. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. because we had the um, river corridor they just through the river corridor on our lap at that at the same time and it was it, 
ended up perceiving to be a bigger issue than it ended up, I think, at the end. But, uh, but that took us quite a bit of reviews to get through that. Um, to get some of that language from, make some things conditional, where originally it was... Uh, we may re be revisiting that. It yeah. was no. Because <laughs> yeah. what came out of that is not what was, <laughs> no. what was uh, determined at those meetings. But anyway, that's, that's the next step is once the plan, the town plan is done, is it would be to take a look at the zoning regulations again. So I've already talked to Rick and, and Cecil and said, we're, we don't, you know, we're not, we don't need two rivers. We need to put the two groups together and myself and Kelly because as zoning administrator, the assistant zoning administrator, the DBA or the DRB, we can all get together and say, okay, this is how the two don't match, but this is what we're trying to use and it's not in here and just trying to sort through it. So right. I think that'll be a good opportunity to get everybody together because this one's writing them and this one's enforcing them. So, so I think it'll be a good process. All right. Anything further on the highway policy? Good. And we have the fire department coin draw request for the 23rd of May and the 5th of September. Do you guys have any times on there? I'm just curious if there were times associated with that. I don't know. I didn't fill out that petition. Kelly did. I'm not sure what they. They're nine to one, or yeah, that's what they usually are. Yeah, nine yeah. to one. Yeah, yeah. She did. We could just, but you can write that time frame on there. Um, Lindley, when you make the motion to approve. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know if we needed to have it before approval. I think that they've probably done it enough that you're gonna be all right. But I'm sorry, I didn't even notice when she. They didn't want to be out there at six a.m. I know, you know, that's what you put, put those hours on the seat. <laughs> Get out there at the odd hours. Everybody's yeah. everybody's prepared for nine to one now. <laughs> Taking <laughs> back roads and <laughs> maybe you want to get out there and uh, catch them. Yeah. <laughs> Go through this six times. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I would entertain a motion to accept um, the fire department's coin drop request for the 23rd of May and the 5th of September, and to allow myself to sign on behalf of the board. Second. Okay. All in favor? He gets it this time. I get it. <laughs> Just trade him off. Keep going back for the so, Therese, on last time we had a coin drop for the Historical Society, I yeah, think? Yeah, I have a note on that. Did they talk to that? Yeah, about insurance. Yeah, because we yeah. talked about, they're insured, like their things in the building are insured, so I need to talk to them. I have a note on my desk. I okay. talked to Brian. Yeah, said, I just got his email address from Kelly, so. Okay. I haven't forgotten. And, and we have a couple of liquor license renewals. One for Tozier's and one for the Central Market. Actually, two for Tozier's. Yeah. yeah. Kelly's, uh, Kelly, Pam, sorry, Tom, sorry, Pam said that neither of them have, and I looked them out, their consumption permit. So anything additional. That's usually something you want to talk about separately, is if they have an outside consumption permit. Thank you, Yeah, so you're going to sign them over here. Ooh, you need to do a motion on that. 
so we'll just give it back. Okay. Oh, it's fine. Oh, yeah. it's story, Jeremy. Next meeting could get a little rowdy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. You might not be welcome, Tozers. <laughs> uh, <no>. Hey, Billy. <laughs> Check me right out. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's three places, right? He yeah, has one more coming. Correct thing. Yeah. So you're all signing the way that nobody's making a motion yet. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> make a motion. We approve the three liquor licenses renewal. Three. Tozers, two for Tozers and one for Central Market. Okay. okay. Tozers has a one for beer and wine and also one for spirits. Okay. Central is just beer and wine. Well, maybe. I don't know. You disapproved a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. okay, so. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who And then next on the list is the conversation in regards to the um, potential donation of the World War II monument. And at the last board meeting, we had talked about maybe if there was any potential zoning right. issues with the site and, and to well, get a little bit more information on that. Exactly. A little bit of this was my own naivete that, uh, as I said, um, I, I think we had talked about this before, <coughs> thought Fort Fortitude was bigger than this. And so when I looked at this, I was like, well, that's, you know, just over the 10,000 square feet. It's going to have to go to the DRB because I don't think that I should approve a town of Bethel um, zoning permit anyways. And this one's a little bit, I'm trying to, what was like, is it municipal? Is it, this is a little sketchy on where, how it would go through zoning. But I just wanted, if you were better versed than I was, when I saw the aerial photo, I was taken aback the size of it was a lot smaller than I thought. And so I wanted to make sure that once you saw the image that you were still comfortable with this. And um, in the downtown, the setbacks are pretty small because that's the commercial business district. So um, I just wanted to make sure that when you saw it, that you were still comfortable. Because once I saw it, I was like, well, how big is this rock gonna be? <laughs> So I just wanted to have you guys take another look at it and be sure that um, I'm still going to speak to Greg Fedak about it. But if you had any specific concerns once you saw an aerial photo of the site, I wanted to be able to give him that information. And, and it, it's not a by right use outline in the zoning reg, so it has to go mm. to the DRB. Have we had any of those come through the DRB in the past? Or? Well, not my Yeah. History. Yeah. So I wasn't sure once you saw it if you had any, um, maybe you only wanted it to be in a specific section or, or maybe not. I mean, obviously he's, it's very, very early in the process, but right. I just wanted you to be able to look at it again. Um, and the aerial photo was helpful to get perspective of the size. Yep. But um, if not, I will just still get a hold of Greg and let him know that you're still open to it, but you want to see his design before he orders anything, and I, we want him to be able to, right. we want him to place it on this place site it on, uh, yeah, so, so that you have see. some yeah. idea, and yep. just I also will let him know in that email that he, as the town of Bethel, as we are the applicants, the select board is the applicant, that it's going to need to go to the DRB. So. Can we requ request that he have it? <clears throat> that the stone approved where he wants it cited before we even see it? Oh, you mean could you want him to, you want to talk about where he's going to cite it before? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, I think what would be easier is if he came here and had a little discussion and maybe brought some ideas with him because so far all I know is that he was going to talk to Rock of Ages and get a piece of stone and have a plaque put on or maybe engraved and then we said 250 names and I looked at this and I was like, Okay, that could be a sizable Rock. marker. Yeah. I mean, I guess I was, when we talked about it last time, I was kind of envisioning, you know, maybe two of these tables type size stone. I mean, I don't think you're going to be able to be able to put something there much bigger than that. Yeah, that's it. So. And, then they, and then, you know, either they, yeah. 
Yeah. All right, so I just want to I would to think that the we were names good. would be in pretty small print. Yeah. Well, and it's also, yeah, do you go around right. Right. Four sides of it, you know, that yeah. kind of size? Mm -hmm. Is it an obelisk? Yeah, sides. that's a good question. There's two sides of it. Ways to yeah. play with size. So maybe I'll mm -hmm. just reach out to Greg and have him um, you know, once they meet and talk about it and come up with some options and, and give him this map so that he can see it as well. So yep. as I thought. Okay. How many names do you have out on the stolen royal degree? They have a memorial right there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I don't know. That's a big rock. It's a big rock, yeah. All right, so I'll just let him know, and um, so I'll email him about uh, and the DRB and just remind, just let him know that's going to be the process because I did spend the time looking through the zoning. Okay. But that was a, I wasn't, I wasn't, can't, I couldn't find that in so the regulations, <laughs> except I knew it was going to, it's not a by right use. All right. Any further discussion in regards to the monument? And then we have the 2020 warning for the town meeting. So the one in your packet was incorrect. It said that Lindley was a three year, but she's a two year. And I have corrected that, so it's corrected on the one you'll sign. It will be incorrect in town report because town report's already been printed, but I'm sure the moderator will totally fix that when he stands up and talks about it. Uh, so we also realized that means it was wrong in last year's town report, not in the warning, but in the information section. So Kelly and I have made a note to correct that. I think it got a little confusing for people when people were filling in seats and said Mo was saying tonight that he thought the only one who actually got elected at the time was Chris. Everybody else kind of took over for somebody or filled the balance of a seat. He thought. So I think that's where it might have gotten a little bit Oh, up. last year, you mean? Yeah, or prior, you know, right. when you guys first came on. You're trying to think. Because Dave, yeah, you, yeah, well. Because he took over for someone and then he got elected. I think that was, no, yeah. yeah. There's Actually, Mo took over for first year. <coughs> Somebody. Yeah, that's date. what he said. He yeah, said the uh, only one who got elected, elected right out of the gate was Chris. Yeah. So that's, I think, maybe where it got confused right. in town for work. So, um, I so got we'll oh. You took Jim's spot, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we were doing this earlier. So anyway, so it's correct in the one that Chris has and the one that Bill Frick has. But town okay. report will be off. But um, it's always one mistake. <coughs> like, I don't know. I'm not sure you'd want to switch that, Lindley? <laughs> <laughs> I had always thought it was three years because it's actually been misprinted all so, of the years so yes. often. Yeah. <laughs> in this position. Yeah, that's so. kind of what goofed me up too. And I thought it was weird that they were two threes, but yeah. I was like, okay, I, I don't know. Then I looked back mm. in the town report and I'm like, you yeah. saying that. So, but anyways, we will. Kelly and I made a note to fix it in town for next time. So because it should, it, you know, by yeah, rights it should have a three year and a two every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that just, way, that way, you can always be a. Right. <clears throat> it just goofs you up when you're running. Someone's got a balance of a seat, mm -hmm. and so I think that's probably where it got off track. So, but we'll correct. Yeah. All right. So, what questions did you have, if any, on? Yeah, on the warning sheet. At this point, um, I'll be back again prior to town meeting to get some more specifics, but. It would just be um, advisory at this point uh, like for Paul and Lily to um, be thinking of what type of speech you want to make, if anything. If you want to put any letters to the editor announcing whatever you're going to do, um, we could be thinking about doing that. Um, and the next three are kind of concerning because I know we have a lot of issues going on with listers resigning and shuffling around and I think mm -hmm. Teresa's on kind of on that as far as who's gonna do what there. I think so. But that's a couple of them. Long it's always good to have some something in the Are we still one. looking for people to fill any of those spots? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have one person I've been thinking about reaching out to. So. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. And um, um, because Judy will take one um, seat, possibly three year, I don't know. Um, I think that Louise is thinking about running for maybe the one year of Jim Gray's and then that would leave the two year open. So that's kind of where we stand right now. Yeah. 
But that's today. So why not? Okay. Right. <laughs> Here we go. And, um, and who on the board wants to speak to which, which items um, <coughs> come up with? Obviously, the, uh, the uh, general fund question. Yeah, um, I think I'll, I'll speak to the general fund question, and then probably, Paul, you'll speak to the human services piece. Yeah, social yeah. services. Yeah. 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 And, and as I say, again, I'll be back just to confirm it. And the range is going to be um, Derek Wright. Derek okay. Wright said he, he came in and we spoke, and so he said he would be present at town meeting. Great. And then we probably ought to have somebody to represent the ordinance mm -hmm. regulating garbage, trash, and exactly. litter. I don't know what we may, anybody on the board wants to, or? Again, you can think about it. Okay. I'll, I'll stay on the back. Um, and who's our representative to the ambulance service currently? Neil Fox. Neil still is? Yeah, he still is, yeah. Yeah, that. I think so. We've kind of had a conversation about it within the last month and a half. I think about that. Yep. So, so is excuse me, is Neil's position um, to be voted on at the town meeting too, or is that an appointed? That's appointed. Appointed. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. So I'll be going to the tune up here on the fifth. So bring back any uh, tidbits as far as, it'll be good, I'll take the warning in, in case there are any mental issues there, but I don't think there is. It'd be great, thank and, you. Uh, mm -hmm. Report back and we'll <coughs> hopefully have us another school in the town meeting. Five minutes, right? What's that? <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll quite get there. <laughs> yeah, you just never know. <laughs> Do you know if Carol's running again? I would assume he is. I thought so. I'll, I'll I'll check it. Well, he had said, <laughs> and you didn't say what, so I was like, well, if he was, I'm probably going to mention it. At our meeting, um, he, he didn't indicate he was not. Okay, great. Knowing well, Carol, he certainly would. Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. But. All right. I didn't check to see if all the uh, tax dates in here are. Remember last year we oh, had one that landed on a Sunday or something? Yeah. Well, and that happens. Was, that, was that last year that happened? And we're going to have yeah. that in February, actually, because yeah. they're due on the 15th, which is on a weekend, and Monday yeah. will close. So we're giving people till Tuesday, but we're putting that ad in the paper. It's easy to stay consistent. You yeah. know, if you change that, so all of the 15th and one is an 18th, it right. just throws everybody yeah. off. So we're just making well, I think it came up last year, right? Yeah, yeah. we're making the ad we in the paper. The yeah. We'll be clear as we'll assign outside and posting on front purchase. Okay, I didn't check it. Still, uh, a slot in the door, so anybody can drop them when they want to. But it does fall on a holiday, um, so we're going to take it on Tuesday. So this is the warning that's in the town report. It's not signed. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be so far. This is yeah. All right. It's hard when you're juggling the schedule of printer in here. So. All but what? Yep. So it looks like three of the four land on weekends yeah. this year. Just, well, then it gives people too much. They should be all happy. But you have plenty of time to pay it ahead of time. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be on that day. Yeah. Right? Exactly. You can bring it in early. Yeah. Anytime you want. But you can get it on uh -huh. two days' interest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Not even for that. Yeah. Right. On the question of other business, have you received any... I have no. I haven't received anything. No. I haven't received anything. Is there supposed to be something coming or? No, I know some other towns. Have yeah. No, I haven't. Like last year, we had a few things that had come up. Yeah. I think only well, one of them never even yeah, came be. around for it. But right. Um, yeah. right. Yeah. So no, I haven't heard anything this I year. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anybody. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the 2020 warning for the town meeting. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Is it 
message do I sign under Paul? Is that? Uh, <laughs> just screw it. I think I did that my first year I signed in Carl's spot. <laughs> Someone will catch that. <laughs> Hush. 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 Yeah. Hush. We've got a couple of them, Mike. We have a couple of little ones. Let him get out of this mess. Hush. Next item up, we talked about it a little bit briefly uh, a meeting or two ago, but we have <coughs> bridge number 32, which is is the um, uh, watershed road, Camp Brook intersection there. Um, we have, <coughs> and there should have been copies of the structure inspection in there. So so as, as it currently sits, the the structure itself, and you know, when you're talking the deck uh, and then any of the um, substructure, super structure, is in satisfactory or good condition. Um, the, the, the super, um, the, the issues that we're having with that bridge right now is the, is the bridge railings and curbing, um, which could create a, a hazard if somebody, you know, maybe slid off onto the curb or the railing could give way, you know, potentially it's in poor condition. Um, so, and there's been some recommendations for, for a period of time on that bridge for some maintenance that we haven't done. Um, and now we're kind of up against that either, either we need to invest the money into the bridge, um, which, you know, after the, the spring floods and things like that, we kind of um, had to put money elsewhere. So right now it's either we need to go forward on, you know, either um, investing some money into the curbing of the bridge, maybe look at a at a structures grant and then match if we could get that, or um, just kind of thinking out of the box. I would brought this up to Teresa a while ago on, you know, at this point, you know, that bridge really, you know, if you had to close it because it wasn't in good condition. It, there are other ways to get on and off the road than that bridge. Um, so I, so Teresa yeah. put, put this together in the packet about an option of, you know, you could do an option of just, um, if it's not favorable to fix it, then, you know, closing the bridge and, you know, maybe have a turnaround area at the bottom and mm -hmm. um, go from there. But place you can turn around there now. No, for, for, for the power trap, I believe, I believe you can make a peek down in there and turn around. There's, there's also a bunch of channel work that was suggested after the um, Irene you know, flood the wing, that never the happened. Wing wall that's um, yeah. So there's a wing wall issue. Mm -hmm. There's, there's um, some armament and some channel work issues, mm -hmm. as well as the, mm -hmm. the curbing and the bridge rail all needs to be replaced. Yeah, and um, it seems, you know, when you look at this, obviously nothing has been done for a while. And I know sometimes people will say, oh, if there's another flood, the flood will take it out. Well, if the flood takes it out, a flood event takes it out. FEMA does exactly what we're doing right now. And they're going to look at this and they're going to say, we won't give you any money because you didn't maintain it. That, and so, so that's not a solution, waiting for another flood, because that's not going to help us out. Um, and you do have a couple other structures. Obviously, there's one meets Bethel and some other issues. So it's, do you want to just close it for now and see, you know, obviously, it's going to be a little while before we have money. If we have structures grants, we're probably going to pick them up someplace else. Um, we know we have work to do in East Bethel, and, and some of the bridges that the bridges that weren't replaced in Irene obviously need some work. You know, we know that already, and that's why in the warning uh, or in the budget we added I think thirty-five thousand dollars for bridge work, but <clears throat> that was only to leverage a structures grant, and it wasn't for this bridge. Right. So. I did ask the fire chief and the road foreman how they felt about closing it, and the road foreman was fine. He said, I don't have a problem with it. He said, we probably shouldn't even put a truck over it anyways, and the fire chief had no problem closing it. 
Um, so. There's a snow and machine. And I can speak to the state about it as well. There's a snow machine trail that runs up through there. That would be dis we'd have to disconnect that part of the snow machine trail too. Okay, they, I didn't know. They that. come up along the edge of, of Camp Brook and then they go over the bridge and up. Okay. And then out into an adjoining. I think there's out in the field there. There's an adjoining trail. Okay, I can ask. That they hook up um, into. They'd have to cut over. And or is there an option else? to just allow the snow machines to cross it and not? Yeah, it could, could be. be vehicles or yeah. close it down so that just the sleds can go across. Exactly. It. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I would just kind of picture maybe putting a couple of jersey barriers in front of it. Well, you have to legally, yeah. well, you have yeah. to MUCD yeah. standards. Yeah, you're going to have yeah. jersey barriers right there and then something else. But um, I can ask um, Molson. I mean, the question that we have right now I can ask him. with that bridge is. Oh, are you? Oh, perfect. So I let's. I'm here. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> there, we have there's basically no other way around that bridge. Yeah. That's yeah. our one way through that. If that gets shut down, that kills that trail. Yeah. And there's not a place further up, <clears throat> not down, I know, but up that you can cross? Nothing, nothing that we can get to at all and safely without having to get landowners. And, yeah. you know, there's the only possible place that you could even think about crossing would be right above the Turks, right on the sharp turn. Uh -huh. And it would depend on a landowner allowing us to come out of their, uh, it's a blind corner. Mm. It's just asking for yeah. Did you see this? Can I give you this? I didn't. Okay, well, let me give this to you, Alex. So this is the bridge inspection, so you can see what we're talking about. And I gave you a picture of, of I know the bridge, the bridge well. I well, can go across it daily. There you go. Well, <laughs> as fast as you can. <laughs> you can have that. Yeah. I have the originals. I have my office, so you can see. Okay. Well, you can see what the issue is, obviously, is it's not a, it's not a cheap fix, um, and I didn't realize that. So, um, so. Um, well, they did. They, you know, you kind of skirt over to one side, obviously, mm -hmm. and go up through. But. Yeah, but when you have to close it to MUTCD standards, which we would have to do, um, but maybe we can. Let me look at the standard book and see. Maybe there's a way if I come out far enough that you can look at it too and tell me well, if I leave just enough room well, between the bridge the and embankment. We drive it. Width of the deck. Width of the deck. Yeah. I wonder, then I would have to do some more research to see if we can close it to only. It'd be hard to I don't know. regulate it at that point. It'd be hard to do that. Yeah. You, you know, if you said, if you put signs up that says closed to, you know, and meanwhile it's wide open, yeah. Yeah. so many people use oh, yeah. that road as a cut through. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. You'd be surprised how many people. No, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I, you know, I have done it myself when, you know, for years when I lived in Addison County. Um, so here's there's the rub, obviously. The wing wall has failed, and obviously when you look at that bridge, you know it's not in great shape. And we did put money in the budget, but not to lever not to leverage a structures grant, but not that bridge. And the problem is we have a few, you know, all the bridge inspections that I read recently. So there's these battle that one another and it's not I'm getting some. Well this one the this state. one was the only bridge that we had that well, other than snowmobiles. You know, if, if you did close this bridge, there there are other ways to yeah. move around in that figured, area. You know, the other bridges exactly. we're looking at, you have to go over the bridge. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, we were talking three of them, right? If I remember right, there was three. Yeah, and I did get um, some more information from, we have other issues too, as far as now the right bridge. It's a beautiful bridge, but the way that the river's coming in now, you and I looked at it. So I talked to Jaren about that and got some information back, and he's saying, we, he's not willing to let us do any work on the channel on the river, so he's saying we might have to put in an additional, you know, wall up or, so the problem is obviously, like every problem, Alex, it's money, not yeah. having enough yeah. issues and not enough resources. It was funny, I was just telling someone today how about snowmobile, like, God, they do great things with bridges, what could we, you know, with a snowmobile club, but. Would so, it be, how about, I mean, would it be hard to replace that with a Bailey Bridge or something like that? Well, 
we'd have to do a hydraulic study, we'd have to, which, you know how that goes. I'm just yes, getting the order for that. Because the tough thing we have right now is short term, short term the issue is really is the, is the failing wing wall yeah. um, and the bridge railing and curbs that are deteriorated. Yeah. yeah. Um, to the point, like, you know, if somebody hit those, Plus would the, they stay on the bridge or not, you know, uh, type of thing. The and then long term is the channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and the erosion of, you know. Couldn't we get it off like we do all the trails and then December 15th you open them up? <clears throat> What's that? A lot, a lot of your trails have got gates on them, right? Yeah. And so December 15th, all the, you know, when you guys could legally run your snow machines, the gates are open. We could do that to the bridge. But well, again, or could we just weight limit the heck out of it? I mean, if Alex knows what have... But but is that, is that way as much as, say, a compact car? What's that? The Your groomer? Yeah, it weighs 10,000 pounds. <sighs> You're killing me. Oh, my God. That's like a time spot. It's spread out. It's out. It's spread out. I know. Yeah. So. It's, it's out there. It's, yeah, it's I mean, the other thing we could do right now yeah. is we could hold off on doing something until the winter is done. That well, would give the snowmobile yeah. club, you know, eight months or so to figure out what yeah, plan B might I be. I think it would be if we... If it was buried off and narrow enough for a snowmobile, if it still would involve, it would make us, uh, we would have to probably truck to get our, right now we can drive mm -hmm. our machine up to where we station it up on the mountain. Yep. Uh, once there's snow. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd have to truck around that mm -hmm. somehow. Right. Which is kind of a pain either that or we'd have to paddle the way up the road somehow. Yeah. Well. There's a possibility. So for safety's sake, for us, it was thinking about, you know, if we just closed it because every, you know, the fire department was fine with it and so was the, um, you know, the road. Well, isn't, there a, isn't there an old road that goes over through by Thad's and yours place? You come down onto the trail that goes up on the hill? Where the, where the, I didn't go do anything. There's an old road that comes out in the right in that field bush. and comes right out by the that certain there is no road that comes out right there that's where the trail was used ago. that's where the trail used to come through a long time ago that's been washed out and thrown up and uh, and there's a big sugar house in the way now <laughs> there's no wood road that sugar house is there all those lines come right down right right to the back of the sugar house that would be a I so, mean, where's the trail on the other side? So, if I'm crossing that bridge towards going headed towards Camp Brook, where do you go from there? We cross and then we run the side of the road, uh -huh. and then right before we get to Jim Ford's, uh -huh. it crosses and it goes right up behind Jim Ford's. And uh, you know, the, the other one would be the way it used with when they used to station that rumor up to Washburn's, there's a road that runs behind Jim Ford's and it comes out. And that you could come down onto that road across, you'd have to cross through Chuck Seeley's, go over his bridge and through his dooryard there. He's not, you know, he probably might put up a little fight, but he'd probably let it through. But then you'd have to go down and cross, and just across from Chuck's, there's a piece of property that goes in, and there's a, a road that goes in that way and they could possibly go in and connect with with Bill Hamilton's. But, but if we don't do anything this winter, you guys have time to... We're good for this that out. Hmm. The, the one thing that, I mean, it, it, there's a... If we came down <coughs> and just didn't really groom the side of the road there, you know, the, the one option that we would have, if barriers were put in and enough room left for snowmobiles to go across, like I said, we'd have to somehow truck our, our groomer up above, you know, to get it up above so that it would be stationed up high. And, you know, we'd have to truck it back and forth for the off season, which is, you know, 500 bucks each time. Yeah. Um, but uh, where we used to turn around, where the two groomers turned around, the one, the mountain groomer would come and it would turn around right in the field on the watershed and then 
the groomer from the east side would come up, it would run the side of camp, go up, and that one would turn around right in those fields as well, and then it would go back. So we'd either have to come down and somehow jack it around in Jim Ford's, because um, it's, it's a pretty long piece of equipment. So if we went down the side of Camp Brook, I don't think there would be enough room to turn around at the bottom of the water sharing a little turn around that would be left. Because you guys but, do fill bridges in different places, I'm assuming. Yes. And so no. if the town were to take that one out and not replace it ever, could you, you could put your own bridge there? Yeah, I mean, we could. <laughs> so you're about as tight on funds as we are. So yeah, I know what We'd you're saying. We'd be, uh, you know, a lot, a, big, big, a lot of the same constraints. Big bridge. Yeah, yeah. No, no. that's what I wondered. Wow. So, well, in the meantime, yeah, I mean, I could, I'll talk to Alan and tell him no more town trucks over it. We could put a new weight limit sign on it to kind of lower the weight limit. Not That may be only tell the town how to drive over it, but, um, and then we can talk about it, you know, in the spring. Oh, yeah. But, you know, as far as maybe it gives you a chance to plan because we don't have the options. Mm -hmm. I don't have any money, and I <clears throat> and it's not. Um, we have another bridge we need to deal with first, so that's what the money was for. Oh. Um, if, if we could leave it enough so that we could cross, I think that would. You know, if, if barriers got put in there and, and four and a half feet was left, that's what we need to get a snowmobile through it. But well, why don't we wait and um, you know let's get through the winter with that, and then see what what options we have with making that accessible to recreational yeah sure. so vehicles sure, talk and talk about it in your club and see if you can come up with some other options, and then just let me know. And in the meantime, you know we can we'll leave it open, and I'll have the town truck stop going over it, and you know any other heavy weighted truck that we can think of to stop going over it, but. We'll still be in the same boat, but um, that's fine. Yeah, they were running log, big log trucks when they were logging up in. I mean, at least. A big log I wouldn't even dare to drive. I don't like drive my car over it. So, no, um, I mean, I'll the approaches are uh, deadly. I mean, they're, they're, they're this deep. Yeah, so I'll get Alan to put so more noticeable weight signs on it. Go through it make the spring that yeah, gives you guys a chance to talk about it. And um, as <laughs> where else you can go. Because our thought was for us, it wasn't a problem. Yeah, we could just close just like it. And it right saves there. us yeah, money. No, at least was, and if we I was make driving, effort, driving down it. through so, there a couple but, days ago and I said, no, there's a snow machine. Well, that's I, I couldn't we tell didn't talk about the 911 viewer. I didn't know about it. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it with one viewer, and, and I can't see they a snowmobile on here. So, um, go, go down through Collins Yard and cross that route 12 to get back on the trail. Of the bridge. Okay. Yeah. When you guys are done with the discussion, that other bridge on Route 12 was enough of a scary situation. I think so. Now it's better than the one on the mountain right there. Right there yeah. I think that's slated somewhere in the. I should be trans. I tell you what, <laughs> it's an awful sketchy yeah, it's trucks on there. Yeah. So, Colin, you said you had more concerns yeah, about the specific the, bridge? Yeah, the, the watershed bridge. You yeah. know, I understand that it needs a lot of work and it's yeah. a lot of money and potential closing. And, yeah. But I guess what I'm concerned about is the road itself being maintained, continued to be maintained down to the edge of the watershed bridge. Mm -hmm. um, there's another property right there at the edge of the bridge, which Yep. I don't, not really worried about, but we our family land borders right on watershed. My brother's property, he, that's where his right of way is. Mm -hmm. And during Irene, when the brook came down through and closed 12 and closed our yeah. road, we cut the old road in that was always there when my parents bought the original piece of property and that was going to be their original entrance. And we opened that back up and that's how we got in and out for a, couple, mm -hmm. for a week or so until we got our driveway somewhat sure. back. And, you know, I just don't want, I know a lot of towns are looking at potentially throwing up roads and getting rid of roads. Right. And, yeah, sure. I know you know, all of a sudden, now we're only going to maintain to halfway across the flat on the Savage Farm um, on the Hall property. Yeah. And we're not going to maintain that anymore. And, you know. That was not the intent. Absolutely not. It was to keep it the class three that it is and maintain it all the way to the end. Because, you know, my feeling is you bought it, people who bought, like the gentleman who bought the end, was the right. last three when he bought it. And right. you no, know, when I talked to the road foreman, the intent was to continue to maintain it. I actually think it, you know, our thought was it would be in better shape longer because it wouldn't have so much truck traffic that actually right. that road would remain nicer longer. Personally, it doesn't bother me if there's no traffic on that yes. road because all it is is it's a, a pass the ball. Yeah. In the summertime, you're outside and you can just 
just see that cloud coming across. Yeah. And some people don't honk it. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there was one time my mom was out in the gazebo and somebody shot through the woods and she heard zing, 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 and there was bullets flying by. So. Wow. Which, well, not to say that somebody won't come down and, right. and any dead end road can turn into party central oh, pretty sure. easily, you know? Yeah. Um, but then the other angle is I'm a lineman for Green Mountain Power. Yep. And the lines run for across Watershed. Yep. They come out of the town of Bethel, they come down Route 12, they get to Watershed, they go out to Watershed, then they split, they go up Camp Brook, and they go down. They go up Camp Brook and they go down Camp Brook to serve mm -hmm. towards Gilead and all that. Once again, the road maintenance. Just yep. make sure the road's going to be maintained, sanded in the winter time. Yes. Um, yeah, there was no intent to, I have no intent, I, I, you know, throwing up any roads or any, I, I, it's nothing I want to do. And it um, seems like you guys have all been through that with ancient roads and all of that, you know, a while ago. But no, nope, I talked to Alan, the road foreman, our intent was to keep it maintained and, and everything. And he actually said, well, it would hold up a lot better if people weren't trying to race from one end to the other to save them a minute or two. And um, so, no, the intent was to keep it maintained all the way to the end. They were going to turn around down there. I think that's the property. So, um, but no, the only intent was to just close the bridge, whether it be temporary or permanent, was really more just a, let's just close it for now, and then do we add it in the list, or do we just not replace it, period, so. Yeah. I mean, I personally think if any infrastructure, is, you hate to lose any infrastructure. True. Because during Irene, when that big hole in front of the old Abbott property was there, that was Camp Brook's lifeline. Yeah. You know, they were... They'd come down and go across there once camp yeah. work was open, and that hole was open for a month yeah. wow. or so, as I recall, before wow. they finally got it filled in. But mm -hmm. it was an extended period of time. Sure. Compared to the rest of the road being. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a month, but it was a while. Yeah. I think the scary thing is, you know, if you read the bridge maintenance that just hasn't been done for years, that has been noted, it's it's a big nut to crack financially and. Um, not that it can't be done, but I, with a structures grant and how many you're going to get, and I would think that it's going to be a few years before, or I would say my guess would be three to five yeah. before we could do it once we put it in the sequence with, um, you know, the other structures that we need to deal yeah. with. But that being said, right. you know, it's kind of the luck of the draw of the grant process. But now, would this be something that would be replaced down the road? Well, that was kind of the discussion was five, it wasn't sure. Years. That's what we were talking about. Would we, you know, would we replace it or would we just keep it closed permanently? But I think that, you know, it was really kind of at this point we were just dealing with a temporary closure just to get it closed because we knew it had maintenance that we couldn't afford to do right now. So, but, um, you know, you all make valuable points that I had no idea that was not the show, so I'm sorry about that. I should have asked him because I see him every day. And, um, but, um, so for now, it sounds like we'll just leave it open until spring, and in the sense, you know, in the meantime, we'll look at all the bridges and see if we triage them and put them in order. You know, how long are we talking, and what can we do? And maybe it's temporary, or we can leave it open just for recreational vehicles, and then make a plan so if we can close it and limit the weight limit. Maybe that would buy us a little more time, and then we could replace it maybe in the three to five year range. Uh, not really sure, so we'll have to do it. But no, I, I don't want to hope for a big flood. No more. The no. Be, no, because no, that's no. one of the questions they ask you. It's like, oh, have you maintained it? And you can't lie because they're right. going to go on a website well, and be like, yeah, the answer is no, you are maintained. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe we can tweak it with some weight limits and and using just recreational vehicles to close it to that, which would buy us maybe the time to get it to the replacement. Because you make the point, I wasn't here in Irene. And, um, so that's an excellent yeah. point. And I do ask too that if you Jersey buried off to match the corner or something going around. Yeah. That you do, there's a big telephone slip cabinet there too that gets access a lot. Yeah. And there's a Comcast box there that yeah. the power goes out, they bring a generator and they go that there. Yeah. We have facilities there. Okay. Poles and water. So just make sure everything's Make sure accessible. we can, the utilities and stuff can get to it with their vehicles. Yeah. Even if there's a barrier there, we can back up the barrier, we can move over it. Yeah. But. Yeah, 
road to get off the road safely. Absolutely. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, no, we're just trying to thought. I was looking at the MUTCD standard manual to figure out how you're going to close it so that someone was deep or someone didn't go through there. Yeah. Just trying to find a proper well, way. Well, that's the so. problem. If you've got a nine foot opening, and even though you stop maintaining it, they're going to go right through there. Yeah. And if you've got a four and a half foot opening, the snow machines can get through. Right. That's ATV can get through that. Too, so, okay. Yeah, it's not an ATV trailer or anything there. So. It's not. So then I wasn't sure about that. It was the All right. Well, just, oh, good things. Just to expand a little bit on Colin's point about the hole in the road. Um, that was on the Camp Brook side? It was on yeah. The, yeah. Uh -huh. but you go across the watershed, um, right yeah. past the wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right there. But there's also a funky intersection there. Um, I think I would want to seek input from Barber Valley Ambulance because, and if I was looking up on Camp Brook, I'd be a little concerned because if that road is shut down and that the ambulance uses that road to access Rochester, Greenville, and Cock as well, uh, I know it puts a big financial burden on the town of Bethel, but that's kind of cutting off some possible access. Oh, for work, but if they come across to, to head up Camp Road? Right. right. Say we have a flood, they develop a pole again. Or, or an accident. I mean, the trucks that use that road are crazy. On uh, Camp Brook, yes. And, no. you know, there's the, if you come from Randolph to go up to Camp Brook, there's a stop sign that you see cars. Absolutely. Blowing through all right. that road closed in that section and traffic diverted down watershed quite a few times. Right. And that's the problem, too, now is, you know, we can't we were working on, on Camp Brook this summer, obviously, and, and was up there myself several times, but that's part of the problem is diverting heavy trucks over that bridge is something we can't continue to do. Right. So we need to figure it out as far as, you know. Yeah. It'd be nice to see them cut off all heavy traffic going over the mountain and make them go around the mountain. Yeah. Right. We tried. It's just asking for trouble up there. I mean, it's Because you see trucks that have no business being up there. I mean, let's, let's stop having a car in that over 47 feet. Why can't we? Yeah. Yeah. Follows along it's true. I've actually worked with the state. If you come into the town office, there's a chalkboard in the room, and I was working with the state about, look, we need to figure this out because we're getting calls, and there's people in a budget rental truck up there with all season tires at three in the morning, so the road crew's getting called. So I did talk to the state, and I have some science there to um, for the road form into order to basically stop that. We had even worked after the April flood, which was difficult trying to get a hold of Google and MapQuest and all those people to say, stop putting people over this road and sending them the other way. This is the detour. And we actually had some success with that for a while. But, um, but yeah, that's the, we, I'm looking at signage for the bottom because there's signage now that got ordered a year or so ago. It's a little weird. That needs to come down. We need to put signs saying it's not going to be maintained from this time. It's only maintained from this whatever, 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. and, you know, no traffic, trailer traffic. They're still going to blow by, but mm. we're just not going to go out at 1 in the morning and help them. Huge fines. But it was. It was crazy. That's what you got to do. Why can't we have examples of a sign of fine? Excuse me? A sign of fine to it. it you know, yeah. It's tough, it? I would have to double check because that's a federal highway, so I'll have to ask them about the fine and fining. And you can ask DMV for your comment to come and say, we don't have scale, so it has be someone specific who has the training to pull over to issue tickets for overweight and they have to have scale. So we certainly could ask the DMV to come and set up there and find out. But um, I can talk some more to um, either Ryan Slack or Chris Bump about, you know, the fine. But like I said, they go hand in hand for overweight. We don't have scales, so we can't do that. Yeah, I know Oscar said he had pulled some people over up there. He has. Trying to get DMV there with scales. It, Exactly, and that's the thing. There's a shortage of that. I mean, I know that Oscar has had the training, but the scale is expensive. I mean, maybe there's an opportunity when we close it in the springtime. Maybe there's an opportunity to, I don't know, gate it or something, and then in case of emergency, we could have access to the bridge, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, just kind of looking back through the notes, you know, the, the first notes appeared in June of 2011 when it started talking about, even at that point, the uh, documentation on that was about the the beam rail that needs to be repaired, um, but also talks about um, um, stream embankment areas that are eroding, 
and, you know, and then since then we've gone through Irene and another significant flood event. So that's probably, you know, these notes now are probably more significant of more erosion and, yeah. um, you know, I think we've kind of have, um, you know, maybe dodged the bullet on that, that nothing has happened with the bridge or, right. or, or motors from there. And it's really a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody drives over it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't spend any time on top of that bridge, but, um, no. but just kind of looking at it, we did have three bridges that are all kind of yeah. got stuff going on, and that was the only bridge of the three that we said, well, do you, does it have to be here? Because the other two have to be there. So, yeah. you know, so we could prioritize the other two and then backfill this one. I like um, the idea of gating it. So <coughs> maybe there's a way. We got some time. Maybe yeah, there's a way that we can talk. use it to open it up for emergency yeah. vehicle. If if we did have a significant event, of course, you know that bridge is probably the only bridge that's still on that road, <laughs> and it looks that right. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> so awesome. the worst bridge in town down here survived. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. There's a reason why it's the worst bridge now. It survived so many events. Yeah. But, so let me um, yeah. reach out to the state and see, talk to them a little bit about it, and see about, um, you know, can we do that? Can we gate it? And, and maybe just gating it alone would buy us time, so that it's not it's not utilized for a while, but it's gated for emergencies and for snowmobile access. Then maybe that would get us to where we need to go down the road for to get a structures grant and to deal with it. The problem with it is the structures grant is always the match, right? Yeah. And right now we're dealing with the ERAF, which is our 12.5% of all the damage that happened in April. And we just received a structures grant last year <clears throat> Yeah. for Louisville Bridge, mm -hmm. and which typically you get a structures <laughs> grant about every two, three years, yeah, you know. Who's applying. So, I mean, you think Lilliesville, we actually got two grants for that bridge. Yes. One one for the engineering Such portion of it and one for the nightmare. final. Uh, yeah. Lower one, not the high bridge, the lower. It was high bridge. High bridge, right on yeah. the corner there, yeah. yeah. So, so, we, he's right. so we probably won't even qualify for one until next year. Right. Um, you know. Then and then that's, we kind of have the East Bethel one. So you get a couple of them. So. The problem is, if you look at the bridge inspections and you read them all, you can see where none of the work has been done. You know, they were replaced in Irene, which is great, but the ones that didn't haven't had anything done, so we're trying to address that. Right. But So let's see what we can do and, you know, talk about what works for you guys, and I'll just keep you in the loop and try to figure out um, do, but as I was saying, you know, we're still the match of the structures grants problem because we just had the ERAP of about $118,000 to deal with some of the stuff. That's not Nello Bridge, the permanent bridge, which I'm working on right now, and Peavine Slide. So then next year we'll have an ERAP uh, share of the damage from that that we have to eat. So it's a tough thing. So do you, do you, you can't, you don't qualify for grants like that. Not to this extent. Yeah, I mean, I, Vast does have some grants, but Vast is really funneling their money into northern stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they wouldn't, it would have to be a bridge that would be only, pretty much only for snowmobiles. Okay, that's what I wondered. We couldn't replace the town bridge. Right. Right. Yeah. But you could, I wonder about that. Yeah. Of course, the challenge there is that the stream channel continues to get wider and wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, so what might be a 20-foot bridge now yeah. may yeah. need to be a 30-foot bridge, you know. Yeah. yeah. And that's really what we're saying. We got lucky in that most of our bridges have pretty much on all these big floods have been pretty much unscathed. Yeah. We have one further, we have two over Canberra further out. Um, one that goes down, it's just, just above Sargent's where the trail crosses, it goes down and, yep. and we have a bridge there and then way up, which is, it's, I mean, it's Canberra, but it's just a brook at that point. Mm -hmm. And that one's actually still, we actually redecked it this year. That one's an old telephone pole bridge. Still. Still. Wow. Which is, you know, it's cleared up in the middle and it's, but it's holy, and we, we redact it. We would have loved to have put I beams in it, and, you know. But um, so, do we want to? Um, we don't have any money either, so. <laughs>
So do we want to put this back on yeah. the agenda for you know yeah. March, and then we can talk about sure. you know yeah, a closing yeah. date, maybe at mud season or something. Okay. You know, let me see. Let me talk to the state a little bit too and see about that. And, um, they have any okay. good advice about that. So we won't we won't make any decision on it tonight. No. Okay. Can we get any funding put in time for our rain the creation? Pretty close. They spoke about it being underwater and stuff like that. Going to flood and stuff. Yeah, we still use it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it was. I mean, one would have thought that you, it probably would have qualified for something. But again, the thing that like um, Therese was saying is, anytime like these notes that are on the bridge, like there's notes on that bridge prior to Irene, you yeah. know. So what happens is FEMA looks at those. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what happens is, even though you, there might be some more damage to the bridge or the tr stream channel, uh, they'll go back and look at those notes and say, well, had this had been yeah. addressed yet? And, and if you can't prove that, then they're less likely to, yeah. to give you any type of grant money. The timeline on when they think you should fix it. So it was June of 11 and then August of 11. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. no, they just send you the notes. Say, they inspect them every yeah. couple of years and say, so you didn't do anything last time. Right. So here, and they keep, you know, if you've done any work, it'll say a note in there that you have. But this doesn't have those notes. And, um, and they do look at them because we had this over line bridge, the one in Lilliesville. They had been telling um, Bethel for a while they needed to do some debris removal under that bridge. And Bethel didn't do it. So when I did it this time after the April flood, they're like, aha, uh -huh, we're only going to pay for a portion of it because it said right here that you had to remove a specific amount. So mm -hmm. we quantified that, and they agreed, and then we paid for our share of the work we should have done prior. And then FEMA was going to pay for the balance minus our 12 and a half percent. So, yeah, they look at them. Because <laughs> the last notes that they had on it was was from uh, October of this past year, and mm -hmm. you know the the last sentence of the notes was the wing failure a few years ago still hasn't been repaired. So you know they're it's in there. That, yeah, they will. And, and that and that uh, wing failure appeared right after Irene. 12 yeah, appeared in on their assessment of uh, October of 2013. So yeah. you know, and I will tell you, they will close the bridge. Actually, 12. I've had that happen. At like two or three o'clock on a Friday, they close the bridge, a main artery in the town. Oh yeah, they some, fast yeah. <laughs> said uh, effective as yeah, day for just closed. Didn't collect any money for so it. they will do that. They do have yeah. the authority to close it, and, Who knows? and they'll do it, yeah. and then. So, well, we can we can work on some mm -hmm. options for mm -hmm. how we can may I'll or may not be able to address that there. for the snowmobile club and too. because they do have the authority to close the bridge, Chris. Mm -hmm. They could come in next week and say, "Done. Today's Friday at two. You're done. It's closed." Yeah. So we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I mean, we we could probably work with it if we can still ride sleds over it. Mm -hmm. Longer pound sleds. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Okay. Even if we have to do something different with the with the tucker to get it up and around. All right. Well, let me see what I can find. He might be able to put some sort of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we might be able to put some sort of gate on it that covers all but four or five feet of the bridge, and then yeah. you can go around it and. All right. If it needs to be I'll used for some emergency, you can open it. At the division in the state to okay. see what they say. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Good discussion. Um, and we had a discussion or update on the Bethel Royalton transfer station. So there was um, in the. <laughs> And they were asking us, asking you all, to reconsider a vote outcome that they were unhappy with at the BRTS board. But I gave you a copy of the interlocal agreement, and if you look at that, they had no authority to do that, in my opinion, at their select board meeting, and I don't think you have the authority to vote on anything here either. It was clearly not a tie. And the interlocal agreement is very specific and says the only time that you can do this is if it's a tie, and it wasn't. So um, if you're okay, I'd like to write back a letter to the Royalton board and let them know that 
the about town of Bethel Select Board is not taking up this issue because per the section of the interlocal agreement, you don't have the authority to do so. Um, there's a couple other pieces of the interlocal agreement that we are going to start to adhere to. One of them is the orders. Um, I'm going to try to send a package or maybe attend the next BRTS board meeting to make sure that that's worked out. So there's some interlocal agreement pieces we're not agreeing to, and, uh, that we're not doing, excuse me. And, and I, we need to, it's there for a reason, we need to adhere to it. Um, so I did see that there was a piece in the paper and then of course you got the letter from them. Yep. Well, that was kind of my opinion after, <clears throat> well, just looking through the interlocal agreement, you know, first, the, the joint board has the decision-making um, abilities for the day-to-day -day operations of that facility, um, where the select board has the decision-making authority basically on the um, futuristic of the establishment as well as any financial relations to it, but not day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. Um, Basically, your control is the makeup of who you appoint to the board. And then looking under under Section 5 of the agreement, which is talking about quorum and voting, um, you know, the this item was taken up by the joint board, and... Um, they did have a quorum that night, from what I understand. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there was no tie in the voting, so no. at, at this point, it, it, it really would one. be overreaching on our point, our part to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I know that maybe the decision wasn't favorable, but, but um, you know, I, I would agree at this point. Um, <clears throat> I know we have a letter here from the town of Royalton, but, um, you know, I just don't see it how us voting on this or not voting on this was going to change anything there. Um, I mean, I think at this point it would it'd be up to the, the joint board to relook at the decision if that's what they want to do. But If that's what they want to do, yes. Yeah. I think the only thing that, <clears throat> that I am concerned about there, uh, without going into any detail, but based upon the decision that was made there, there has been some threatening um, behavior? gestures and behaviors that have happened since then that does concern me on the fact that if it isn't handled properly, it could open the town of Bethel and the town of Royalton to a lawsuit. Um, and, you know, not to say that it's not being handled correctly now, but, no. you know, right now it's in the hands of a combination of the, the joint board and the... the Police department, right? Um, but uh, this threatening behavior has been ongoing since then. Yeah. Um, just making sure that I think at this point that the joint board um, gives the support to the individual that's being targeted, um, because if they, you know, maybe don't feel that they're getting the support, then it could become a, a larger issue, which we would obviously be responsible, a uh, half responsible party for, so um, and it probably should be something that be brought up at your next meeting, which, yeah. which will be in February, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so if you're that, okay those are my kind of two cents. I don't know how the rest of the board felt, but. If the board's okay with it, then that's my plan, is to just write a letter back to the Royalton board and just tell them that you know, we're not going to take this issue up and refer them back to the interlocal agreement, and, you know. Yeah, I, I feel the same way that uh, the same sentiment that Chris has. I mean, there are other vehicles for them to bring that topic back up for discussion if they want to through the joint board. Or they could, you know, they could potentially bring it up in other business, you know, at the so we town can table board. It. Uh -huh. We can just forget it and table it. Yeah. So there are other vehicles for discussion, um, but there's no authority, as far as I can see, that the, this board has to. I can't see any reason to bring it up again after what's been happening to the manager. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, 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 yeah. you're just giving in to people harassing and, and threatening, and yeah. mm -hmm. why would we want to bring it up again? And you had a mm -hmm. legitimate vote. It wasn't like it was closed. It was no. four to one. No, no, one. You yeah. know, the loss. Move on. No. So I think it's, um, all right, I just wanted to. Be this sure is just not the way to, to go about, you know. Because I read it, I, it was in the paper, I read the that. article in the paper, and then I got the letter, but I had the letter after it had already gone to the paper. So, um, yep. but I just wanted to make 
make sure that the board had the consensus of the board before I wrote the letter back. Well, I think we talked about it, I don't know if it was the last meeting or the one before that, when they were deciding yes, about the yes. free table. And, yep, we did talk You know, I mean, I think, you know, when we talked about before, you know, if yeah. you just look at, if someone just came to you and said they're pulling the free table, then you're saying, well, why would they do that? But yeah. if you look into the reasoning behind that, and <laughs> and from what Mo was, you know, before my time here in Bethel, you know, there used to be a swap yep. shack. Uh, uh, back uh, there. Back when, before we uh, camped the original landfill, that little white building by the uh, entry gate, that was a swap shop. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably still there. Yeah. And yeah. They closed that for the same reason. They got right. people throwing garbage in. After we built the new building to, mm -hmm. at the transfer, they did have a free table for a while, but the same thing happened then and they got closed for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's pretty unfortunate. I mean, I, I know I've donated what I perceive to be nice items there. You know, if it has a stain or it's slightly broken, I throw it out. If it's nice, nice, I put it on the table. But I think, you know, it's one of those cases that it takes a few to spoil, you know, everybody else. And, uh, and it does, you know, the manager, too, was charged with cleaning up the facility, cutting costs, and dealing with some of this. So those are the changes I'm so. The other thing is kind of, because it's always fun to revisit the interval <laughs> agreement <laughs> so, um, and, and I did have a conversation I think with Teresa today a little bit on this but looking through the budget portion of it it does state in here <clears throat> that the joint board shall review on or before November 30th of each year approve or revise and approve and propose budget upon approval of the joint board the budget shall be transmitted to the select boards of the town of Bethel and Royalton for final approval. Yeah, and I don't, I don't I think that we've ever formally accepted in a budget. Okay, and I other than usually it's informational. Right. Um, so that might be. That's some, something else we're going to talk. I'm going to send that will be. I'll send a note to the maybe joint something board. Like, shoot up um, the ladder there as well. I talked to the BRTS manager Jen Bartleman and asked and said I have a couple things for your next agenda. I'll send for you to put in when one of them is. The warrants and one of them is the um, is is dealing with that as the budget and that budget needs to be revisited I think the BRTS board had approved it in October but let's come to light uh, that there may be some modifications need to be made and I did tell um, the Jen and that I would be happy to take a look I said just give me an hour with budget and we'll mm -hmm. we'll look at it see what we need to make for changes and then we'll send it and back to the BRTS we'll look at it and then send it to both the boards and and also have them doing your own warrants. I talked to Pam Brown, town clerk, about how we can manage to do that. So. And, and any other operational signatures that need to be on yes, any other items, yes, that should be something. all done by the joint board. Exactly, and that's what is also going to go. And I signed something because they had a piece of equipment coming, and I changed the wording on it when I signed it so that it was Royalton. And, but I want to let the BRTS board know, look, I signed yeah. it. It's a month to month. I'm going to have you guys sign and ratify it or not. That's your choice. You only have to live with it for a month. But there was a piece of equipment coming, and she was like, I oh, need didn't really have a choice so and, and I know we go down the rabbit hole every couple of years with this yeah. local agreement and it, it's it's pretty black and white I mean confusing. it spells out the yeah. <laughs> the agreement pretty well other than it doesn't seem like yeah. either town or the facility ever wants to adhere to the agreement yeah. I mean it really is what it boils down to yeah. I think to um, the board itself the BRTS board is you know is great about it and so it's certainly going to bring these things to their attention and um, like I said, I signed the other day, and I'm like, ah, I'm not supposed to be done, but I'm assigning anyways to get the equipment here, and it's month to month, so I said to the gentleman from Casella, well, <laughs> they don't want it, they'll deal with it in a month, but. Uh, well, that had to be done anyways, because it would have been six weeks before we had our next meeting. Yeah. We either had to call a special meeting or have you do what you did. Right, and I think that's fine as long as they talk about it. I just, I, you know, I'm certainly doing it to keep the wheels turning, but. Um, wanted to just make sure so and it was interesting too because I found out that Casella was listed as the operator right. which I did not know so that was interesting. I try not to stick my nose in transfer station there was a lot of things down there that was happening that the board was not aware of yeah and I think they'll change you have a new manager I think things you know transparent what's that saying a new room sweeps clean is that it <laughs> and so <laughs> but anyways all right well that's good I'll draft that letter to the board of uh, the royal yeah, because oh, yeah, at this point, I think they were looking for 
Yeah. Either a, a, a response, a, response a, a favorable response, if not having some sort of yeah. open forum to, to discuss it, which I don't feel that there's a need to do that as well. No. <laughs> Mo can have all the discussions he wants. So. That's right. <laughs> At his monthly meeting. Judy. Yeah, just take Judy. She'll back you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's taking a step in the right direction down there. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's needed it for a long time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just like Chris, I've gotten stuff from the free table and I've left stuff too, but yep. it gets out of hand. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that nobody would want. Yeah. yeah. It was time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine if you want to say that. that people are really So that's kind of you, thank you. Um, but yeah, I think so. I've heard actually not really positive from Bethel residents that I've spoken with said that it looks good and, and um, like the fact that they're reinstituting the numbers issue for going across the scales. And you know, she, tonight, Jen was in a good position because she'd been on the PRTS board before, so she was looking at, and she worked there a while ago, so she, several years ago, so she understands the workings. And I think, um, yeah, you know, give her a year or so. She's already making some good choices and I think it'll be great. But she has definitely appreciated Bethel resident support. She said she's had a lot of that, and it's made some other things uh, tolerable. Very good. Any further discussion? OK. And then the last item we had was <clears throat> the one we had added, which was to to reappoint um, the two members on the Planning Commission. Um, which should have already been done, but and their terms would expire in 2021. Yeah, it's so it's Cecil Washburn and Peter Dorn, and and they both came to me after the planning commission meeting. I was like, hey, we should have been reappointed in 2018. We keep showing up, he said, but I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And so, but they did just ask, just you know, I don't think they want to be sneaking three extra years in. They said 2021. <laughs> oh. I said, all right. I'll I was very kind of them. They both seemed like they've served quite a while. All right. So 2021? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And it's Cecil and Peter Dorn. So I would entertain a motion to, to reappoint Cecil Washburn and Peter Dorn um, to the terms of um, the Planning Commission with their term expiring 2021. So Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So if anybody wants to join the planning commission, we have a Doug's got a lot of time now. You can fill up a lot of these committees, Doug. Actually, you know. <laughs>
was a question you had, and that's the answer. Mm -hmm. I had to ask him again what the level you all were. So, um, so we talked about the planning commission. We talked about the world monument, the stuff that we talked about tonight. Um, so Paul has been doing a great job um, trying to get rid of those chairs in the basement that Alex saw oh. <laughs> and in the garage. So that's just good. And um, Paul also had asked me about uh, the property that we own on Sugar Hill. We're obviously in the process of evicting the tenant, and I believe that the tenant has gone. But trying to verify that. Oscar did go up the other day, said it hadn't been plowed, there was no tracks in there. Um, but I'm gonna be lit, uh, writing, we can issue a 48 hour notice that says the landlord may enter without a tenant's permission, but only after no less than 48 hours notice. Because obviously the concern is, um, you know, what's going on up there. Has, was the, did the water freeze or anything like that? Do we have keys to the place and stuff? Or how no. do you? Keys. The, Ten wasn't going to bring them to me, so yeah. so no, I don't have so 48 a, hours. We're kicking the door, or how's that's that going? That's probably it. I might know somebody who could unlock the door. Well, and it might be already unlocked. I don't know oh, okay. what the situation. I know is, somebody but I did send Oscar up there to walk around the property. He said it hadn't been plowed, so perhaps it's been vacated. I did already do the follow-up paperwork with the state, uh, mm -hmm. not state with the court. So I asked them to. Um, Oh, I had to issue or write a write a motion for a summary judgment asking for a writ of possession, basically, so that we can go in and ask. So, but uh, I'm going to issue the 48 hour notice and then Oscar was going to go up and access the property. Obviously, we have insurance, so the plan always was to sell it as is. So, while I hope that, you know, the water hasn't frozen, there's an issue, but kind of the plan was to sell it as is. So, but it takes a while, the eviction Very process. It's at 459 Sugar Hill Road. The town of Bethel bought it two, three years ago now at a oh, tax sale. Probably even farther than that. Yeah, yeah maybe. Back Let's in case well, day. Back in I case day. Came. came on right before I came on the back board. Back in case day. Right, yeah. right before so, we got on. Yeah. We're happy right at some point. Why the town does it because yeah. of this process right here. So we're working at it. Anyways, um, so uh, Oscar did go up and, and you know hike up there because it hadn't been plowed. So. And um, yes, and Paul says he thinks he might have somebody to get rid of our, yep. to take our chair, so that would be great. Um, less things to trip over down there. Uh, so since our last meeting, Tim and I had our 90% meeting with Aldrich and Elliot. The project's on track. Um, David Rue, Rue just sent me actually the draft easements because what's going to happen is you can have, so temporary construction easements are pretty easy, but if we need a permanent easement and the person who owns the property has a mortgage, then you have to write to the mortgage company and the mortgage company has to give a partial release, so it's, it's a process. So um, he actually just sent those this afternoon, I just printed them out, they're on my desk so that I can read through those. So what will happen is once um, the engineer goes through them, I go through them, we approve them, he'll take the word draft off from them and then we'll start meeting with people to get them to sign. Um, the easement. So there's several easements um, to have the big water construction project happen. So we will um, be working on that shortly. So um, also as far as we had talked about um, Crystal Drive. So we talked, um, Tim and I had a meeting with phone meeting with Patrick Smart and he gave us some good information about that, how to move forward, what he was looking for, what side of time frame. Obviously our thing is if we end up, you know, drilling wells on Crystal Drive, that's obviously a cost um, that this package is not going to cover. And so we, you know, we were trying to push that out a little bit. Obviously we have a $2.8 million project coming. We don't want to take on a side project. So we have to get a little bit of information from our attorney and a little bit more information from the engineer. We're going to send them up there and, and um, have them start doing a site survey so they can decide, you know, where, where can we site these wells? So if we were to move that way. Talk to them a little bit about some of the concerns of the tenants, or the tenants, the residents, excuse me, of Crystal Drive. And, and he was very good, very positive about it. And, and they've been wonderful. So. so once we can get a little more things done, we'll write to the residents of Crystal Drive. We're just trying to keep them in and let them know what's going on. So the town report is printed, which is great. So um, obviously always a treat working with Penny at Spalding Fresh. That went out really well. 
Um, I met with two representatives from Senator Sanders' office uh, regarding funding topics. One of the topics that I talked about was that obviously we have several um, sometimes older residents that come in and have issues about water bills and things like that. Ask them about you know you know help for seniors. Uh, veterans, that sort of thing. They did say that if they had any particular need, that um, if they didn't feel like they were getting everything they were entitled to from Social Security or from the veterans to reach out, they had people that do that. Um, she, one of the ladies, Haley Perro, is sending a list uh, for Deidre of all the um, recreation grant opportunities and told her we'd be doing another AFG grant. They're obviously prepared to write us another letter of support, and so uh, that was helpful. Um, not sure. How, you know, it's just nice to be able to talk to them to let them know that we had some seniors with some issues to see what they could do. So more work with FEMA, that's an ongoing process. I did just get an email this uh, today in my inbox from the state of Vermont, so we may actually be seeing our federal highway money, which is all the money we have tied up in Camp Brook Road, which would be great because I had to take a draw off that loan um, to put those bills. So that will go directly to Mascoma Bank, but that's what we've been waiting for. Um, I did draft the RFP for the hydraulic study for Pinello Bridge and then sent that out to Chris Bump and Mike Blakesley to ask them to take a peek. Um, Chris said he wanted to speak to a couple people at the state. He felt like maybe there was a couple things that they could do, but I'm just kind of letting him know that, you know, I have a timeline on this. I need to get the hydraulic study done, which he thinks will take probably about two weeks in-house. It's kind of, it's just a computer module, but the fact is um, he knows what we're trying to do, which is basically to replace that bridge with something just like it. I did speak to the fire chief to see if I needed to go any wider than the existing footage that's there. It's like it's about 17 feet. And he said no. He said, look, Teresa, if there was a fire, I might put rescue across, but everything else is going to stay on the other side anyway. So that was an issue for him. We know fuel trucks are getting across. Um, somebody did just move into the house, so I did let the road crew know that. But uh, So that's on target. Obviously, we're trying to get that temporary bridge or the permanent bridge wrapped up. Um, obviously, there was an illegal burning, so I sent a resident a letter about that and talked to the state, so we're all set there. Um, still working on an issue with a culvert on Schooner Road that has been an issue since Irene, but um, nice people just trying to display, display the myth that we did not, that Bethel did not receive money and then put the money somewhere else. That did not happen. Uh, Bethel was given money to put something back and that's the way it was, but it's, obviously they feel it's failing and so I've been working with Jaron Borg at the state and I realize it's class four, but we may, we may need to be doing something up there. So there's a liability issue there. Which culvert is that? <clears throat> it's uh, near the Crossman, so it's on Spooner to yeah. Troutbrook. And apparently, after Irene, they were promised a big um, box culver and it didn't happen. So there was an old fuel tank that got dropped, that was dragged back into place. That's what's there now. And it's not doing well. It wasn't doing well then. And that's the only thing the town got reimbursed for, was to just put that thing back in place. But they were promised a proper, you know, box culvert there, bridge, and that didn't happen. And the problems only got a little worse. So I requested the hydraulic study that was done at the time. And the river engineer, uh, Jaron Borg, sent it to me. And, I was hoping we could, uh, something else would work there, but it's not going to. So it is class four. Which it makes sense because FEMA wouldn't have given us any money for a class four road anyways. No, they got money. So it has to be at least class. class. That time. Right. right, right, exactly. Maybe a, maybe a private, yeah, the private they homeowner could have obtained some, but not Yeah, us. the bottom line is, however, is they were promised <laughs> something. Um, right. They have been through what, they're on their fourth town manager. So, um, and they sent me a packet along with a small bill. And, um, but as I said, they're just really frustrated. Very nice people and I can certainly understand what their issue is. So from a liability standpoint, it may be something that we are going to have to tackle. Um, and that's, uh, so I'm still looking into that. And writing them a letter back, I dropped them a letter. And, not promising them anything, just telling them we are certainly aware of the situation. This is where we sit with this right now. And so it'd be nice to give them closure. They've been battling this whole thing for you know, years. So 
Um, but I know how you feel about class four roads, but we'll find out. This this may just be a this may be a live so we may have to tackle this part. So that's it in a nutshell. <coughs> The select board meeting minutes from the 13th. Do they have any questions with those? For the record, Paul, I fixed the spelling of your name in the last one, so you're good. <laughs> you're going out of posterity, correct? You can't imagine the variations of spelling I've had oh, yes, my, na my name. Oh, yes, I spelled you the wrong way. Sorry, oh, that's, that's all right. That's okay. It was my first name, Paul. I've seen it all. <laughs> I have called all sorts of things. <laughs> I make a motion we accept the minutes as submitted. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> and other communications, there was Brick Committee, was DRB notes. Oh, we should talk about the Brick Committee. They were there supposed was. to be slated, if you remember, to come in tonight, but they had received their estimate on the skate park of uh, Parker Construction. There was some issue of, they didn't understand what the in kind was. Um, so that when they got their estimate from Parker, it included um, a tracked skid steer, a roller, a compact. Like, we don't even own this equipment. I can't, I'm not going to rent it to come to do your project. We don't have it. Also had materials in it, and that wasn't part of the agreement. So I did write back to the entire committee after I attended that meeting and said, okay, here's the issues that you need to address. And they, I think they still were waiting to hear back from Parker. So I said, look, the board doesn't want to see you again until you have a so I pushed them off to February 10th, maybe, the next meeting. And if they're not ready then, we'll just keep kicking it out until they're ready to go. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that was the update from attending that meeting. This seems to be some differing opinions <coughs> in their minutes of concerning the skateboard park. Yes, there were. Yeah, but it was good. You know what? At least everything it was just, aired. Yeah, they had it out a the conversation open. about it. I know there's people that are frustrated with it because there hasn't been any progress made. And, um, they're certainly on the cusp of making progress. It's just really going to depend on on the estimate since we the board already agreed to sole source it to Parker. That's great. But um, there certainly was a misunderstanding about what the in-kind was going to be. And as I stated at the meeting, we can't give you equipment we don't have. We don't own a track skid steer. Don't own a roller compact. I can't give you that. Um, so Shane was going to revisit that topic with Parker and just say, hey, you don't have to do that. I was like, I gave him some names of people in the community that maybe have that that could that could assist them. But like, we just don't own it. So, anyway, so they're they're coming along, but you won't see them now until February. Anything else to come before the board? Chris, yes. I apologize, I should have shown this up front, but just a note, um, I was here a few weeks ago regarding the Bethel Operator's Manual. It's like it's coming to fruition. Um, right now it's open for a comment, so if you guys get a chance, I think, you, I don't have the URL, but just Google Bethel Operator's Manual. I think you'll be able to get to the... To is, it on, is it on our website? No, I don't it's not linked to that. Well, it will be, but this is this is the uh, oh, draft version. The draft link. Yeah. And where it is is you can make comments right on it. And, mm -hmm. we'll and when do we have until the mail <coughs> comment? Or, uh, February third. So basically just the rest until February third. I think I have the URL, so if anybody wants it. Yeah, I, I, I pulled it up already and looked at a significant document. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot in there, and there's a lot we could have slightly wrong. So. Yeah. I do. I have some comments about the the section that they asked me to look at. So, I've um, been talking to Victoria. Yep. And, uh, Great. I reviewed my section that you gave me. Okay. And then I I put my notes on it and then gave it to David Altergetti and said, okay, here are my notes. What do you see anything else on there that way? Um, so I think you'd ask for him to look at it too. So. And then the some box. comments on it, the hard copy that's at David's shop. Great. Yeah, we'll be picking all that up and working on that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have copies ready for our uh, town meeting. Nice. So that's, that's pretty great. exciting. It also had, 
shouldn't say this, and I know I ask you guys for money, but we've had some donations, some significant donations come in, so we should be able to have a good number of copies. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And how will those copies be? Are those going to be? They're going to be. They're not going to. We're not going to have enough for every household. So we'll be handing some out. Mm -hmm. to we'll have some at the town office, and it will kind of be just distributed as, as long as they last, but mm -hmm. not a blanket distribution. Okay. It's going to be available online too. So uh, most of the younger generation will just go that route. But there are old folks that it's coming handy for that we'd like to get them to. So. Right. So thanks. All the best. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you.